The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. There's a girl, she's a star, she's got style, Steffi Star, you see her face around the town, she's popular, Steffi Star. Okay. Hi, I'm Stephanie Weinstein. <laughs> and I'm Meredith Keach. And we have a top producing real estate team right here in Easton. Woo! 11 people. That's right. We are just charging forward and taking over. Closing out the spring market, massive sales. It's been such a great year. Huge. Grateful Huge. for all our clients. Oh my God, we love you guys. Thank you so much. Yep, yep. Commercial, residential. Vacation, investment. Vacation homes. Mm. Yep. Oh, closing on an investment home today. Oh, Rhode Island, Cape. New Hampshire, mm -hmm. Massachusetts. Yes, we have people that can help you in every state. Yeah. And we are here with the one and only <laughs> Matt Catalano. <sighs> the crowd cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Matt of Wildly. Road Plates, roadplates.com. 24 7. We'll be off the air next week because of this. <laughs> On call. <laughs> Tell us what Road Plates is. So, road plates are those steel plates in the road that you probably drive over, especially in New England, all over the place, yes. on construction sites that basically protect open holes and from cars from basically going through them. So you can, you know, you can, the roads can still be accessible with stuff's under construction. Ah. Gas company use, oh, no. use them probably predominantly more than anyone else, like Feeney. I'm sure you've seen them all over the place. So the construction hmm. companies don't have them. You, they outsource to you guys. So roadplates.com was started by my friend Gary Donovan about 33 years ago. I went to work for Gary about eight years ago. And what he does is we have about 1,500 rental plates of all different sizes. We sell plates. We rent plates. We fabricate plates. With this. Can I get a plate? Yeah, what if a Meredith wants a plate? I think I need one. A four by four is about 600 pounds. Do you think the aircraft carrier can lift it? <laughs> no, but you can bring it there. And what would you do with your plate? Put it in my driveway. We've, I've done a lot of residential my could, stuff. My kids could practice. That would be awesome. Pucks off of it. I oh, bet it's pretty slick. Yeah. It's like hot ice. Can she? Anything's possible. See, there we go. Just ask. Roadplates.com. How much would that cost? Yeah, how much would it cost? Well, how, how big is your driveway? Um, you extended. Like six car lengths. Okay, how much is six car lengths of plate? More than more than the aircraft carrier would want to spend. That's why I would <laughs> be buying it. Yeah, Meredith. More than, more than you would want to spend. So, okay, so we, Town of Easton has a hole in their road and they need a road plate. What do they do? If they don't have any of their own, yep. which they have, we, they, they have called us before, they would call us, say there's a sinkhole, there's an issue going on, or they're doing it. They have, an, they have an emergency sewer repair and the hole has to stay open overnight. They would call us, usually within an hour. We'll be out there with a the truck, with you know, depending on how big the hole is. Road plates are anywhere from 4 by 6 to 8 by 20 Oh. They're wow. 1-inch A36 standard, which is a federal standard. So an 8 by 20 plate, just to give you an example of how heavy plates are, are 6,300 pounds. Oh. That's three cars. Oh, wow. So, so they're totally safe. Well, they're, they're rated. When it, that's that's the federal standard. You can't put, legally, that's what you have to put in the road. In the old days, guys would put one inch, quarter inch, you know, just anything. <laughs> they were trying to get away with it. Well, Come in the hole. <laughs> well, but th that's what happened. Big it, truck it, goes in. People, well, Plates still fail, too. Plates that aren't rated. We've seen that happen, too. People buying Chinese steel, and what happens is, you know, you get these heavy trucks going over, the plate just shatters. Oh, <gasps> can you imagine? Happened in Boston about seven years ago to Feeney. <gasps> Thank God nobody got hurt. The driver was fine? The truck went right into the hole. <gasps> well, the gas trenches are only basically two to three feet wide. So the truck rate. The problem is when you have like saw holes, which are like seven, eight feet wide, 10, 12 feet deep. Wait, say that hole again. <laughs> what do you mean? Wait, I just want you to repeat the word. Yes, I can't. Like I'm dying. That's the leaning back. I can't. I, we've never had a gas. <laughs> Wait, that what lean. kind of hole? S-E-W-E-R, please pronounce it. I love it. Say that again. What do you say, want to say? say the word. Hole? Sewer. Sewer. Sewer hole. 
The sewer hole. L- listen, I can go back. I, I got there's this, a Y in there, I, I think. I, I, get, I get this in Mississippi all weekend. I can go back there. I mean, I, mean, I couldn't even open my mouth down there. What did they say to you? At, they're like, we, we just love you. when the Yankees come to town. <laughs> Say pack. Oh Say pack, you cat. I went to school in Buffalo. That's all I heard no, for ma. the four years I was there. Garcia your pack. Oh, my God. I Rides his horse accent. in his backyard. Yeah. I'm sitting there trying to not talk down south when I went down there. I mean, how often do sinkholes really have? Is it like a lot more growing than up think. quicksand? I thought for sure it was going to be something hello, in my life. Meredith, there's sinkholes all the Everywhere. time. The idea of sinkhole Everywhere. is terrifying. Don't, now Meredith's going to have nightmares about I will. sinkholes. I will. She so, worries about I'll give you an example. I got an emergency call last night from Donella Utilities, who is Verizon's main utility person. They're, they're a big account Wait, what if you're in a dead sleep? I wasn't a dead sleep. But the phone you, goes on. Yeah, but do you go, ugh. Can you pretend you don't hear did, the did, phone? Did you see Stephanie, my, this is why you don't do on call. Did, did you see oh. my Did you see my truck outside? No, no I was rushing it's, to get in. It, it says no days off, twenty four hours, and it's bright yellow. And it's oh, bright yellow. I didn't notice it. Okay, so you get a call in the middle <laughs> so can, of the night. Yeah. For we got a call last night in the middle of the night. A Verizon contractor. They had a sinkhole. What? Right next to it. Well, really, what it was? It was Boston Water and Sewers manhole that had collapsed and they were trying to blame it on Verizon because of the Verizon trench parallel to it. Trying to pass the buck. Yeah, well, that's like how big? How big? They needed two 6 by 12s and a 4 by 8 So that's probably, I don't know, maybe 10 feet across, 10 feet by 10. And just a big gaping hole just happened overnight. It wasn't a big gaping hole. It was on the side of a manhole. So it was going, you could actually, an 8 foot pry bar would have got lost. They could have dropped it down there. That's how far it went. Nope. So. Nope. nope. That's, that's, I mean, it happens all the how, time. Well, how do you even put the plates on? Uh, machines. I mean, this is what you have to use. They all have lifting units in the middle. But how do you know it's, how do you know where it's solid ground? Well, sometimes you guess, but I mean, a lot of this is from experience. Guys have been in the business a you long know, time. You know, Matt, I'd like to hear a little more precision rather than sometimes you guess. Okay. But Well, Meredith, can you look? When you walk around, can you look in the ground? You have X-ray, X-ray, X-ray eyes? No, she does not. And this is why I'm terrified of sinkholes. And sharks. sharks. So usually and usually a, a hole like that, Meredith, and they, fires. they overcompensate. Yes. Which at the worst is yeah. probably fires. <laughs> what? Matt's so, angry so that we're interrupting. No, no not at all. Oh. I'm scared. I, I have four women at home. You think oh, I mean, yes. I to get interrupted? I'm, not, I'm just glad I'm able to talk. That's right. Oh, oh I have a question for you. Shoot. And you, who in your house cleans the shower drain? Not me. <laughs> Plenty of times I do it. Ever. Ever. Always. Never. The, gr- I, the girls in the hair just goes, it just clogs it up. It's disgusting. In fact, Anthony just cleaned it out the other day mm. in Alexa's think? shower. Take it you? to the guy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but I think you have to pour something down there. Like, um, well, no, you can pull oh, no. it off the top of the screen. Yeah, you take the yeah. unscrew the thing and pull keep pulling. Yeah, you keep pulling, it's and it's like this big of hair. It's gross. It's like a mouse. I, Aren't you supposed to pour like baking soda or vinegar down? There? Well, no, but I, about a year ago, it clogged. I had to put industrial, you know, drain cleaner down, like the heavy duty plumbing yeah. stuff. Yeah, just to make it go down because it was all clogged. It was all hair. Well, yeah. We have hair. Well, the girls go like this, and all my girls, you know, again. Meredith, are you trying to brag that you clean out your own drain? No, but I did pull it out this morning oh. and was like, well, I wonder who cleans it out in their house. Yeah. Now, my husband would say, we don't get clogged drains. Guaranteed. Ask him when you text him. Next time you talk to him, just ask him. Be like, who cleans the drain in your house, Hannah? <laughs> we want to know. Well, there's, there's two women in your house, your daughter and you. I mean, do you have, yeah. I mean. Shouldn't be a ton, I don't think. I have four. There's there's a difference, especially yeah. the girls when they're sh- they're conditioning their hair. They're going like this. Yeah. Oh yeah. You lose the like a hundred hair. hairs a day. Oh you're yeah. Supposed to. Absolutely. Mm. A clump of hair, we lose a day. Pretty much, especially if it's long. Right. Just gets grace. everywhere. God punished me and gave me three daughters. That is a blessing. You know what my brother said when his first daughter was born? He said, "I'm not going to be alone when I'm old, and you don't have to take care of me." That is so unfair. That's exactly what he said to me. There you go. He was thrilled. Yes. Because in the back of his mind, he genuinely thought that he was going to be living in my basement as he got older. And now he doesn't have to. And I don't have to take care of him because his girls will. 
<laughs> he laughs now. Well, I just, again, she knows it. So my father passed away and be 30 years next year. I was 26, so I was the only boy. So, I, you know, my mother was, we did a lot. She was a young widow and I had two sisters and they were great, but I didn't abandon ship. So I find that offensive. <laughs> Not that anybody cares. Oh, that you would take care of your mother. Well, no, I mean, I, 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 I'd like to think I did right by my mother for 20 years. Yeah. Of course you did. Yeah, but what right. I'm saying is if... But y- if no, but you always hear that the, you know girls will, girls will be there. That's you hear that all the time. That like like boys like abandon a ship because yeah. they get married. My daughter already told me she will have a bedroom for me wherever she lives. Yeah, but I think if he were on his own, he didn't have his wife and kids. He was in the back of his mind thinking, "Where am I going to go?" Meredith's basement. Yes, <laughs> I later found out <laughs> he didn't want to be alone. No one likes to be alone. No. No. Sometimes for a few minutes. Deep thoughts. Men, men, the older they get, as my late mother used to say, and it's hard when your mother's always right. When I was younger, I didn't, you know, I don't need anybody now. When my wife leaves, I'm like, please come home. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Well, well, well no, I mean, coming men away? become more emotionally needy the older they get. Oh, That's please. a fact. I Absolutely. Hate, I, hate, I hate to say that. That's a complete fact. Yeah. 100%. I went away for the week and I missed her. I, again, I don't, I, if she's not. In the I just it just doesn't there's something wrong. Mm. I like yeah. it when you talk in front of your microphone. I'm tr- I'm, <laughs> Let me hear you now. Can you hear me now? I, yeah, I like that. Oh, that's okay. better. I'll yeah, because that. you know you're over here. Well, it sounds like you're, you're in the other room. Well, I'm very I'm back. very paranoid on my big mouth. My wife even warned me before my I left. She goes, mouth. "Don't yell." No, we are loud on the show. Yes. We like to talk over each other, so you don't need to worry about that. Well, I, uh-uh. listen, I listen to some of the. Some of the park, yeah, it's very, very interesting. It's very free flowing. You guys do a good job. In fact, at my office, Stephanie made me get out of the common area, and I had to get an office with a door that closed because she, she said, "Wow, I am obnoxious. I am territorial. I am domineering, and I am too loud." <laughs> Meredith took over the common area where everybody was welcome to use that office. There was several computers in there, but your friend Meredith K. Keach would go in there. And shut the door. And she would be loud. So who, especially the new agents, they were petrified. So when an office opened up, I said, Meredith, you need to take that office. She said, no. And ultimately, she took the office. Tough chick. Yeah. Tough chick. Yeah, but I get through to her. Mm. She always says no, and then she says yes. Mm. Maybe. She realizes most of the time, I'm correct. Dig in. Isn't it funny how, like, her husband is? I'm, I've become very good friends with her husband. He's a very honorable guy. He's very quiet. Though. Like, Meredith likes to talk. I like to talk. Salesmen like to talk. That's what they do. Mm. And it's just funny because Sean is a quiet guy and yeah. reserved. And he does not like <laughs> I'm to the talk. Exact, he I'm, the exact, I'm the exact opposite. I just, well, opposites attract. Yeah. But, Steph, you had three things you wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about um, my charm bracelet. Mm hmm. Love it. But you paired it with other bracelets. I did. And so I follow this woman on Instagram, Carolyn something. Mm. Do you watch her? Mm -mm. Anyway, so she said to buy these bracelets. So I did. These cute bangles. Yeah. And then I wanted to add a charm bracelet. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be stacking. Mm. I stack. I don't. Yeah. I'm a stacker. I like gold. Stack around the necklace too. But I like silver. Actually, you can mix. I mix. And you know what? My bracelet, this one is mixed metal. Yeah, but the silver looks pretty on you. I think so. I wonder if your skin is better matched to silver, silver. than to gold. Yes. Yeah, and I think I'm better at gold. What are you, Matt? What's your wedding ring? Do you wear a wedding ring? No, I don't. Why are your knuckles too big? Mine are. This actually isn't even my wedding band. I told you I'll take you to the jeweler. I know, I have to get Well, I, I have an excuse for this, even though the first, I'll be married 26 years next week. It was didn't go over, I didn't go over well. In the construction business, I, oh, I'm a, I have a see, I drive a truck sometimes. Yeah, I get it. So when you hook down like this, my father-in-law, who was in the gas company for years, told me that you can't wear your ring because if you hook it, you'll rip your finger right yes, off. Yes, that oh, happened to a friend of ours. Yes, yeah. someone at our office. Yeah. She was missing a digit. Yeah. And no one even yeah. noticed. It got caught on a swing set. Yep. And, and it was a two-year fight with my wife till she finally figured out yeah. that her father finally convinced I have another friend who I did have an it, idea a guy. for you. Mm. What? Same thing. Rip the finger off. Oh. I'm, I'm no less married because I don't wear a ring. No, yeah. I know, but I have a great idea. For your anniversary next week, you should go and get your ring tattooed onto your finger. Bro. Mm. 
and yep. go and go home to your wife and say, I love you so much. I love you. And I got my ring tattooed on my finger because I want to wear my ring, but I can't because I want everyone to know that I belong to you and how much I love you. <laughs> so I am tattooed now. Yeah. Matt? I don't want to get thrown out of the house. I love that idea. I thought it was brilliant. I think my wife would rather just have me wear a ring. I drive the truck a lot less. That might not be a bad idea. I mean, my, my ring is upstairs. Sister-in-law. Believe it or not, my ring. I don't know if it'll still fit me. It's, it's still upstairs. Would you wear it on a chain around your neck, like I do? Well, I would. I, <laughs> well, no. I think that's a, actually that's a great idea. I mean, I wear a Saint Christopher. I always have. So, I mean, I, I would. Yeah, that's actually a nice idea. Do it. Is your yeah. ring silver or gold? It's gold. You can mix. Yeah. Look oh my nice. God! Put it on. But just wait, make sure your chain is is strong enough to be able to hold it. Well, I'd have That's a strong have chain. Well, I got this over at the um, in Dedham at the religious store. Oh. They sell the chains too. Nice. Oh, there you Alexa go. would probably like that. Yeah, she loves a religious piece. <laughs> my daughter. I've Don't always... buy gold right now, though. Oh my God, I got Very an update. Expensive. It was like twenty five hundred, uh, whatever it's counted as. Every oh. every commodity is expensive. Very right expensive, right? right. Now. Set, time to sell you. What? I love your nails. Oh, right. Adam. Oh, my Adam, if you want to get a close-up of my nails. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yep. I love. Yep, did a natural with a pretty blue tip. Matt? Yep. I've seen some of that at my house. Mm-hmm. Yep. Love. Thanks. And then the only other thing, I, I don't remember what I wanted you to said talk jeans. about. jeans. Well, my jeans are too tight. Oh, right but, now? Yeah. Uh-huh. But it's, you know, towards the end of the summer, so to be expected. I don't even want to talk to you about my new starch thing. I just want you guys who are listening, listen to Dr. McDougall. Why? That's all I'm going to say. He is brilliant. He is fascinating. And you know how good your body feels when you eat potatoes? Oh, this is your potato And when you eat rice? (laughs) How good? Do you love a potato? I do. Who doesn't love it? Anyway. Adam. Yeah. Do you love French a potato? fries, tater tots, mashed, baked, no, fried, No, Dr. McDougal, roasted. at the end of the day, he's like, your body craves starches. He Makes said sense. the carb, the anti-carb people are killing you. Oh. He said, you're just s- rice, mm. potatoes, mm. lima beans, mm. corn. He said, please stay away from animals and oils. We are not meant to drink cow's milk. A cow. Damn it. Um, yes. <laughs> it, he was fascinating. Anyway, so. I was I'm good s- up to that point. I like a steak. I love steak. Oh, I love milk. I oh. I love corn. I love potatoes. I love, I love, we'll beans. Eat. I love So today I made just a green salad. Yep. I put white rice on my salad yep. and corn. Mm. Delicious. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm eating today. The other thing I want to talk about was, and, and I do want to talk about this more, okay. my whole starch Let's thing, start. but not today, oh, not today, okay. not today. All right. All right. No, so I owe my dentist, Dr. Lakis, yeah. an apology. Oh, I go might, ahead, say it. I might, what? Apologize. Dr. Lakis, I am so sorry for the way I acted yesterday in the chair. Mm. So I, Matt, I, it is my biggest fear. I'd rather give birth to a baby. I would rather give blood Let's call it an irrational fear. It's an irrational fear of the dentist. It is not. I feel the same way. Well, so I actually go every four months to get my teeth cleaned. Which is weird. And I actually might go even more. I just, because diseases start in your mouth. Can't you brush your teeth and floss? Well, I brush at least twice a day. I've got all different flossers. Anyway, so I like to go get my teeth cleaned every four months. Anyway, my hygienist hurt herself, so she's not there. So I had to go to a new hygienist yesterday. I was hyperventilating. She came out with double mask and a shield. Why? I don't know. All the newer girls are doing it. I have a young one over at Dr. Recupero. Same thing. I was like, <laughs> I'm looking at her going, I mean, really? I mean. Well, so I've been going to this dentist practice for years, mm. and I love them, and I love my dental hygienist. Hopefully, she'll be back in October. Anyway, she knows me. And so we go over my teeth and she says, you could use two crowns in the back. I said, don't talk to me. And she says, honey, I don't really care what you do. They're not my teeth. And I say, fine. So we have 
yeah. an agreement and an arrangement between us. So then she always says, I'm bringing Dr. Lakis in. I say, do not bring that man in. Now, yeah, now I was at Doyle's two weeks ago and I was in my convertible club. I go out with some other couples and we don't know where we're going and there's a leader. And so, and so. Car convertible? Yeah. So Anthony and I decided to have a pit stop first at Doyle's and maybe have a kettle soda. Mm. And so my favorite popcorn in the world is served at Doyle's. So I'm eating a piece of popcorn and sure enough, something happened. Mm. Something happened happened mm -hmm. the tooth is rigid mm. so i go in for my cleaning and um she said any changes in your teeth i said yes so now i had to go see dr lakis uh -oh. so i had to switch rooms mm. and i'm waiting for dr lakis i'm getting really really like anxiety ridden and she goes he can't come in right now because he's doing a root canal uh -huh. on someone <sighs> so i'm sitting so then dr lakis comes in and he goes let me look and i said dr lakis do not touch. Mm. I said, you may look, but you may not touch my tooth. And he said, how am I going to diagnose you? <coughs> I go, right. I don't know, Dr. Lakers, but just don't touch my tooth. And so then he put some type of thing in my mouth and he goes, I have to see if the tooth is dead. Oh. I said, oh, well, I started fake crying. Oh. <laughs> I, I, yep, it was a horrible scene. Dr. Lakers is pissed at me. Mm. And he's like, you know what? Like he's had it with my antics because this has been going on for about 20 years. Mm. And at the end of the day, I have to go in in two weeks and get a crown. We are on the top or bottom? It's on the bottom. Mm. And I said, Dr. Lakers, I'll be fine once you give me Novocaine. And he just was disgusted with me and left mm. the room. I think I have a crown. I'm going to say After it. I get a root canal. I think you know. A sorry no. What? I think I have one. I did that to a doctor once, Steph, and a dentist, and I never went back to him. But I didn't like his the way that they scheduled appointments. Oh. So I fired them. No. So the point is, they're used to it. I mean, with dentists, like, in your mouth, I don't want people in my mouth. And the dental hygienist, I wasn't used to her either. She was in no. all around with the gloves, and then she was standing behind my head oh. going this way. There was a lot going on. I'm still traumatized. Matt, you feel the same way? Well, Park Dental in Stoughton, who I've gone to my whole life, is Recupero's. Recupero's Stephen, and they live in Easton, actually. So Stephen took over for his father. I mean, it, I, I've been there so long. I have, I have the chart back when they used to take yeah. the x-rays with the little squares yeah. back to 73. Remember, yeah. I used to gag. Yeah. yeah. So his father had... His father was tough. You know, he'd just he'd stick to... He'd be like, suck <gasps> it up. <laughs> Just, oh, you know what I mean? Oh my God. Don't be such a Mary. I mean, just, you know, old school. Don't be a Mary. They have the drill and it's like. Mm, 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 mm. You'd be like this. I'd be like, this is probably why I'm traumatized by the dentist. I'm like. Right, because we all were. Yeah. I, I, we're, I think we're, well, you're younger than me, but yeah, traumatized. Well, when I had a root canal, I will say <gasps> it was outsourced. I'm forgetting my dentist's name right now, Dr. Rob in Mansfield. Anyway, he doesn't do root canals. So he outsources to a guy who only does root canals. Oh. That's it. Interesting. All he does is on route one. And I went, and I had fear because I remember my dad getting them and saying that I mean, they it were sounds the worst terrible. A root canal. So this is it. So we, he, the, the dentist said, the, or the doctor, whatever it is, said, yeah. I'm going to numb you up. He said, and then we're going to sit for like 10, 15 minutes until it works. Yeah. So he just sat next to me. We sat there. I found out that he played in the wiffle ball tournament. Oh. And we chatted. And, and he was like, okay, we're good. Because everything, whatever, was numbed up in my mouth. I did not feel the root canal. Why would you say it hurts? I felt you? none. I, I just well, had, you know, I've, had, I've, I've, had, I've had five of them. So but I this just guy had one. only does root canals. I think only you need a new canals. dentist. It shouldn't hurt. Uh, Coop is pretty good. He's been doing this a long time. For it didn't guy. hurt. He, didn't the, hurt. How come it didn't hurt Meredith and didn't it hurt, hurt you? Because this was really infected. And he opened it up and he went to do whatever they do. He went to clean it oh, out. No. And it, I, I literally no. screamed the F word. through the. It's a good thing I've been oh. going there a long time. That's how much it hurt. And he, he was like, I'm really sorry. Oh, my really God. Infected. I would have said, you know what? I'm out of here. Yeah, but you, like, what, what why did he fault? not, why I did know, he not know, but, numb you up or whatever? Right. I don't get it. This is numbed up. This There's numbed no up. way. If you can get this an epidural and not feel childbirth 
and you can have like open heart surgery, can't, you can't, were not no, can't say anything about an epidural. Thank God. Exactly. <laughs> you were not. You weren't anesthetized. This, this was. This, this was again. I've had probably five root canals. Okay, this wait is a probably minute. The worst. Did he say to you, "Drink this whiskey and then bite on this bullet"? No. Okay. His father would have said that though. His father, to be honest with you, his father would have just said, "Suck it up, Matt. Be quiet." <sighs> Okay. Well, you know, my father had an abscess, so my father's old oh. school Greek. He's 93. It's another story for another day. But so he went to the dentist, and they're like, we want to pull your tooth. And once father found out the price, he said, absolutely not. And he, <laughs> he, told, his caregiver, he told his caregiver, take me to the liquor store. <laughs> Papu went, bought himself a bottle of whiskey. This is a true story. This is, And he is 93. And he started putting whiskey on the affected area. How did it work? He's fine. Okay, well, there we go. It went that, away. That used to be what you do to the kids when they were teething. Don't laugh, but we actually did that to my oldest. <laughs> put a little whiskey on uh, the gums. Well, that's, that was the Irish would do. My Irish mother-in-law, yeah. that's what she said. You put on yeah. the gums. Yeah, well, that makes sense. It actually worked, to be honest with you. I'm sure. Oh, that, that reminds me. It. Like, poor Gregory, I, I, had a, I gave him a bris. What's a bris? They cut off the foreskin at the home. And you celebrate the cutting of the foreskin, and I swear to God. Thank God well, I'm a Catholic. So the Cantor, <laughs> Meredith. Thank God I'm a Catholic. Meredith. And the Cantor's name was Cantor Pesseroff, may he rest in peace, and his nickname was Cantor Pekaroff. Now, Cantor <laughs> Pekaroff came to the house, and I can't, like, why did I do this to Gregory? And Gregory had a suck on a piece of cotton that had alcohol on it. And then Dr. Pekaroff, Cut Gregory's foreskin off. It was a celebration. Yeah. And then everybody said, yeah. Mazel tov. For everybody then- except Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Greggy. Yeah, I'm sure, sure Greg was celebrating. Now, meanwhile, I did that for my father-in-law, where my sister-in-law, who that was her father, she didn't even do it. Spencer had his skin removed in the hospital like a normal baby. I thought that's when they did it. Well, in the Jewish tradition, it's nice to have a bris. But I don't even know who does it anymore. It's well, it's called a moil. So the moil comes, and all a moil does is cut off foreskin. It's been fourteen years, but I think I think they did his. I don't know when they do it right after he was born. They do the it in the day. hospital. Yeah, I said, yeah. I, well, after Gregory was born, they said, I said, please keep his foreskin. I'll be having a breast with Cantor Packer off. Whenever I think of that, I just think of the you know the uh, meet the parents. You know the second one there when they. <laughs> It ends up in the fondue. <laughs> <laughs> I am speechless right now. Yes. I haven't much to offer. Right. Yeah. It, that was really kind of barbaric. Poor Greggy. Wow. And, it was, and yeah. And after I gave birth to both my kids, the first one, Jason held up my placenta, placenta to show his parents. I'm like, put my placenta down. I do not want your parents looking at it. And then my second child yelled up the umbil- umbilical cord. Wasn't in on any of it. I'm old school. Why? Your mom and dad were in the in the birthing no. room with you? No, Louise and Sheldon. They didn't come in the birthing room, but it was right after I gave birth. Thank um, God for my they sister. They hurried in. And uh, that's when Jason showed off my placenta and the umbilical cord. She's Nothing a, is secret. She's also divorced. I'm divorced. Just telling you. He's very nice, though. Jason. He's fine. Wonderful. The problem solver. Yeah, he does solve problems. Yeah, and he's our marketing expert. Yeah, if you need marketing pieces. If I was in the delivery room, line, I might be divorced. Straight line solutions. Straight line solutions. Jason Weinstein. His middle name is Eric. My sister-in-law went in. Again, Jane my wife is fine with it. I, again, oh. back, you know. Back in the day? Well, no, but I just, I mean, you become, guys become guilted into doing something they're not comfortable with. And, and you were comfortable. No, but listen, I love my wife, and I, I she's like, I don't want you in there. I mean, so her sister went in, and but I used to get a lot of crap from her. Like, how, why didn't you want it? I go, I just. I, I, I don't think I'd want. I don't know. I don't remember. It was all a blur to me. All I know is they said, would you like a mirror? I said, what? no. Oh, I used the mirror. I did not use the mirror. Oh, I nope. I was in shock. I, I could understand shock. why you wouldn't want to, but it was very helpful. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Hmm. As a male, I, I wouldn't want to see that. Just again, I wouldn't, you know. I had a friend that had one of those phobias. No, I'm, I'm good. What are your phobias? Uh, what are your fears and phobias? What are my fears and phobias? Yes. Sinkholes? 
Dentist. <gasps> Still, don't, don't, I don't want to talk about the dentist anymore. Um, okay. My biggest fear is. I'm going to do Matt Catalano stuff. Is, is, yeah. oh. Now I'm up. Now you want me to do that one? Mine doesn't even go that far. Oh. I like to be right up to the microphone. Oh. It makes me feel like a radio star. My biggest fear is not living up to my wife's expectations. Mm, that's nice. Oh. Mm. What you should ask her. Why don't you ask her next week on your anniversary? I don't, I don't need to ask my wife. I know what they are, and they're, they're very high. She has very high expectations for herself, as you as do you, mm. as does your husband. Mm. I mean, again, a lot of people we know. I just again, it's. As a guy, it's hard to, you know, my wife's always like, it's hard to always be like this. That's it's hard. Like what? What do you have to do? Set the table. Oh. Well, no, I mean, I, I mean, I do all the cooking in my house. I do all the shopping. I have for years. I like to. Mm. I like to help. Again, people, like, they meet me. They can't believe. Like, I did, I fed the babies at night. We, Ian never was able to nurse because it didn't work for her. So I used to do all the night I, feedings, everything. You didn't pretend you were asleep? I did. I, I was. I loved it. To be honest with you, Aww. I love that nighttime too. Me too. I it, you know, I remember like when Harry was born. My son was born in September. You know, he was three months. So that he, we were up I, watching the Australian Open, like it, because it used to go overnight in January. It was great. I mean, oh, September what? Twenty ninth. My wife's birthday is the thirtieth. I can't forget. I never forget those two. Oh, mm. Yeah, I, I always remember the the my wife's the oldest, the youngest, the two in the middle. I couldn't tell you when their birthdays are. Stop. I, when are their birthdays? November something is Nora's, and then April. I don't something. know. We're making the April something. They're like twenty three, twenty one, and twenty. Not that close, but oh. like close. The girls are. Well, no, I mean the the three is well. Bridget would be 23, Megan's 20, Nora's 17, and my son will be 14 in September. So there's almost 10 years between my oldest and my youngest. But that, yeah. other than that, they're close. No, but I mean the girls are close in age. What if mm. your fourth one came out a girl? Would you have gone for the fifth? I thought he was a girl. I was trying to figure out a girl's name, and we couldn't use the name Kate because my wife has an Aunt Kate she didn't like. Yeah, so I, th that was the problem. I'm like, really? We can't name somebody because you have an aunt you don't yes. like? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I, was in, I was actually in the other room. It was a controlled birth because my wife has clotting issues on Coumadin. What's a controlled birth? So a scheduled birth, I guess is what oh, I should okay. say. Oh, a so C-section? No, oh. no C-sections, all natural, crazy. This one was crazy. Epidurals? You don't know you weren't in there. I'm assuming so. With heads, with with heads this big, yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. Mm -hmm. No, my, the first one when my oldest was born, they had they couldn't get her out because her head was so big. So they tried the forceps. She had a cut on her head, and then they had to send the crash cut. That they had to literally go in and get her out. That was scary. That's yeah. that's any 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 hope for me to ever go in the delivery room after that, that was, was out. Right. I'm thinking crash cart might be a road plates term. Well, that's what it looked like. Okay, <laughs> just check. <laughs> did they have to use forceps? Because they did that on my did. niece. She had, she, had, she, had, she had a cut over her eye. Yeah, so my niece's <laughs> and it didn't work. head came out like uh, a cone. Yeah. Well, Luckily, it went right back into shape, and she's gorgeous. The Catalano kids all had big domes. Funny. I'm the sure Weinstein, your girls love hearing that. Weinstein kids had small heads. In <laughs> fact, when I brought Gregory to his doctor appointment, the doctor was measuring his head. And Beetlejuice. She, she measured it again and she said, may I ask you a personal question? I said, what is it? She said, do you have a small head? I said, yes. But and so does a, my husband. But you have a big brain. Yes. And she said, this explains the size of Gregory's head. Mm. Now she wasn't worried. A big head does not mean big brains. I'm, I'm astute to that. I'm, I'm full <laughs> foolproof of that. Um, all my kids had really, like my son is. They do have large heads. Well, all my kids were over. There was only one who was eight, seven. The rest of them were over nine. My son was 10 pounds and he was two weeks early. If he had gone full term, he would have been about 12. Big baby. Big. I, well, again, the, the first birth was so hard. I can't even believe my wife would even had another child after that. Because you forget. Yeah. Oh, my wife would have had like 10 kids with a doctor. What a letter. She just loves it. She just likes Aww. it. So when he was a boy, he came out. If I was in the next room, my sister-in-law, they came over. I thought they were kidding. When they said it's a boy? Yeah, I thought they were kidding. They thought you thought they were playing a trick on you. Mm. Well, no, I was, I was again, you just be happy with the guy upstate gives you. And, you know, again, and right. we didn't, never found out what any of them were. And Did you find out, Steph? I did not find out with Alexa. 
And everybody said I was having a boy. With Alexa or Gregory? With Alexa. Oh. And then Gregory, there uh, I ha- there was a, an issue, so I had to get an amniocentesis. Remember uh, that? Yeah. And they're like, he might have Downs. Oh. I go, what? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> like that's his scary. pinkies extended. I go, what? Oh my god, I'm having a Downs baby. And then, um, and then, so she's like, well, we have to investigate further. She goes, trust me. She goes, I'm pretty sure nothing's wrong she goes and you're gonna curse the medical community for waiting making you do go through all this in two weeks and blah 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 so of course everything so i get a call i'm like don't call me call my husband jason had on the beeper oh it was a it was beeper days back then and so i was getting ready for my bowling league that morning and i got the call and i'm like oh you're not supposed to call me and she's like everything's fine and she's like, do you want to know what you're having? And I'm like, um, I guess. She said, you're having a boy. I immediately hit the beeper. I beeped Jason 911. Jason came running home. He said, what is it? I go, I'm fine. And we're having a boy. <laughs> I didn't find out with mine. You didn't? None. Yeah. But well, I didn't. I told them not to tell. But then she asked, and then I was all so over eighty percent of people find out. Find out. Well, they can't take it now. I don't know any young person that doesn't find out. Hmm. Uh, again, I just. I, I... But you guys didn't find out. It really wasn't. Be- it wasn't in style back then. Really, it was. Uh, I, it sister, was kind of when I was doing it. Still, eighty percent of the population. My sister, oh. my sister and I found out all three of her. I mean. People like to be prepared. But I didn't never understood that. And I felt like it was the one last mystery of life. She's 100% right. right. She's a, Not just that. Right. People take for granted, and my sister who's a nurse will tell you this, that all births go easy. That's not the case. No. God, no. So, I mean, people die at birth still. I mean, it, 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 it is, again, I just think you should be happy for a healthy child, just my opinion. And... You know, you get people to paint worried about paint rooms, just worried about getting the baby out healthy and, you well, know, getting... that was a consideration because the Jews have the bridal, the baby shower after the yeah, baby's we born. we don't do... And I... Sh- I like that I idea. wanted yeah. the same thing. I did not I like want idea. a baby yeah. shower. God forbid. I didn't. God, God forbid. forbid. God forbid. Shabbat and it tomorrow. happens. It happens. I have a lot of, of friends. It happens. it happens, too. It's terrible. People have yeah. no idea. This is what these... They just think, oh, that's not... No. It's not, yeah. you know. Well, that's it's, what I mean. Right. I told Alexa, I go, why don't we start a new trend? Meet the baby. What's that? After you have the baby, we can have a get together. People won't do that because they don't want to meet the baby. No, they don't want you exposed. You exposing your germs to the baby. Well, you know what? I mean, I have a friend who put a sign on her stroller that said, "Do not touch," Ooh. because she had twins, and she said people all the time would come out and touch her babies, and she's like, "Don't touch my kids, you germy, filthy hands." Especially in COVID days. Aren't they supposed to get germs, though, when they're little? I don't know. It, you know, for their... I, I agree with that touching. I just think that's very rude to do that. It's, mm. you know, it's yeah. a way to do things. Don't touch my baby. Even for a guy my like dog me, there's a way like to either. do things. Don't my dog, my you come at her like this, and she will growl at you. She doesn't like it. Still? I thought she went to training camp. Nope. She, she's, she's fine, camp. but she doesn't want you coming out and, like, touching well, her on the face. I don't blame her. I don't either. My first child, my daughter, Bridget, we were at Pasta Benny. This is, Bridget was maybe five months did she bite someone? No. my The Petties are a family from Brockton who've lived in Easton for 30 years. I, I went to high school with their son. I'm very proud of them. Tutu Benny. Tutu Benny. Sorry. Pasta Benny from old school people. So Mrs. Petty sees me. She comes over. She, My my daughter, my wife knows her a little bit, but not much. She just grabs Bridget right out of the... Mrs. <laughs> Petty grabbed the baby thought, out of Matt's thought, wife's thought, hands. I thought, no, no, right out of... Because you know, we had her in the carrier. You know, oh, the, right out of the carrier, the, you know, Mrs. The, Petty. You know, it's a snap and go. Wait, how they old They still is, got snap and go? Yeah, baby in a bucket. Baby in a bucket. Wait, how old is Mrs. Petty? How old was she at the time? Oh, she was probably 60. Oh, they don't give a shit. Well, no, but it was just, you know, I mean, she, I mean, she just, she just... So she, she loves she babies. Well, right, exactly. Bridget was a beautiful baby. She wanted to hold the baby. I thought my wife so was going to have cardiac arrest. Did your wife say, excuse me, can I have my baby back? No, she didn't because she knew that, you know, that she figured out that they were, you know, I was very friendly with them and it just, you know, but it was a little scary at first. Well, especially with your <laughs> four, your first. Well, yeah, exactly. Just grab a baby. If it was Harry, she'd be like, oh, thank God I needed someone to hold on to. Exactly. But it, is, it is amazing how by the fourth kid, no one really you cares. Could kill, yeah. You don't really care by the third. Yeah. The fourth, forget about it. Yeah. It's like they don't even exist. Yeah. 
Well, it's funny you see these people who are like being pregnant, like like you know, some of the younger people that we see, daughters, friends, or whatever. You know, and it's almost like <laughs> it's a you're having a baby. You're not you know you're not going to the moon. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. I, mean, I was that way though. Yeah. I was that because I I'm didn't know. Pregnant. I didn't know I anything. I didn't anything. know. Right. I didn't know what yeah, I did. But didn't our know. parents didn't know anything. They'll, yeah. I remember Oy. my mother telling me that. I, I didn't know anything. As they my mother know. said. Oh, but I was also an old mom. And I think there's a difference there. If you're 21 or 22, right. or 25, there is having a baby. What do you mean you were an old mom? Different. I was 39 with my last That's baby. That's basically elderly when you have a baby. In, Not in, as old as the queen. It is called it might be her geriatrics. Family. Oh, I have a question. Yes. Why is that old? Anne was 42 because when she had Harry. Because your body. All but 35, they yeah. call it geriatric. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to get them, take them, get them, do them when you're young. Yeah. And so at that point, you're Why? like. But my mother, well. What? Because your it's better for your body when you're younger. The complications happen. Well, no, I would agree with older. that. Obviously, we had complications. Right. Ian was forty two, but still, yeah. I, there are people who have kids almost when they're fifty now. It doesn't matter. Oh, it's still over thirty five years yeah. considered geriatric. But it's a lot more common, though, isn't it? My wife says it is. I don't know. It's having it's babies later, yes. it is yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But the like, doctors don't love it. No, you really should be sixteen. <laughs> 12. Please don't horrify me. Please when don't, my when me. my mother, uh, oh well, my mother always said the first child is the experiment child. Oh, yeah, and then the second child, you, you know, and then my mother also said to me, "Don't be surprised if you don't bond with the baby mm. as soon as you see the baby." That's a good thing to say. She to moms. said, "You don't know the baby, right?" And you have to. My girlfriend said the same to me, and I was so thankful. Yes, and I was like, "Oh, but that explained my mother's relationship." We didn't have that With problem me. in our house. If anything, we have to unbond my wife. You know, they're, they're adults mm. now, and she's still bond. She's, oh, yeah. yeah. So Trust it's like me. It's so different in the beginning, them. though, when you have this baby, and you don't know their personality, right. and it's I your first one, do. and you don't know what you're doing. I was petrified. Jason and I left the hospital. I'm like, they're like, bye. Same. I'm like, I'm I like, can't leave them. I don't know what to do. I go, what? And we, we were living in East Taunton at Riverbend. Taunton. Yeah. My mortgage was $413 a month. I'm like, Jason, how are we going to afford $413? Anyway, we bring the baby home, Alexa, and she's in the car seat. And we, you know, I'm sitting in the back with her in the car and we get home and we go into the condo and I put the car seat down in the living room and Jason and I look at each other. We're like, now what? Yeah. I didn't know what to do. There's no manual. Nope. There's no test. Nope. That you have to pass when you leave the hospital. Yep. They just let you leave with a human being. Right. And of course, so I didn't breastfeed, so Alexa's bottle fed. One day she is drinking from the bottle and she's like, Wah! Wah! Colic. Like, oh my God, something's wrong with the baby. <laughs> so I call my mother. She's like, Ugh, take her to the doctor right away. I said, no matter what bottle I do, she she tries to suck and she's screaming. Mm. And now she's not eating. Off to the doctor I run. They said there was nothing wrong with this baby. She's as healthy as could be. I came home. I told my mother. She goes, for God's sakes, did you clean the nipples? They're probably clogged. She was right. Every nipple was clogged. So then I stuck a toothpick in them. And wash them out, and she was fine. My mother-in-law was at my house for the first five days, and then my own mother That's came. That's nice. No, my, it's, again. Did super. you like that? Yeah. Lo I love my late mother-in-law. I was very lucky. When you again, I tell young people all the time, guys, they talk about getting married. Right. You marry families too. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you know, I was very blessed. My mother and father. Yeah. Like my, they were like my second parents. Oh, that's so especially nice. since my father died so young. Yeah. I felt the now same I have way. A, a client who's also a friend, and after the baby's born in her culture, I don't know what the culture is. I didn't really ask, but she went and in their culture they go and stay with her parents when the baby first comes home. That's delightful. She doesn't go home with her husband. She goes home and her mom helps take care of her and they help transition. That would be lovely because going back to my mother, my mother said, "I will not." Do anything. I will not do laundry. Mm. I will not help you with the dishes. I will not be cooking meals. Yeah. How, how she nice said, of her. <laughs> the old, the old, she's you. She's you. The only thing <laughs> I, was, I will I do, the that. only thing <laughs> she, she said I will do is I will hold the baby. But that's, that's all I wanted. I didn't want people to come over my house and do things for me. I just wanted you to be a baby holder. Well, honestly, I needed baby my insides so my and intestines, they, it, like I could have used some help, to oh. be honest. Did you have a C-section? No, it was 
a tough delivery. Yeah. And it was That's, like, th we had four tough deliveries yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. There was fainting involved. Beat up, just beat up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I went. I did not have tough deliveries. You were born to bread children, to yeah. breed children. Mine were you were great. born to give birth. Wonderful. Gregory was Labor and well, not really. He almost died in childbirth, but it's fine. It was magnificent. That's scary. The umbilical cord wrapped, wrapped around, around his neck. Yeah. Oh, God. So every time That's you horrible. push, uh, he lost oxygen. Oh, boy. And then, you know, we don't have to go into that, though. Yeah. Right. He's fine. Thank God. Yeah. Wait. So, okay. So, what are your other. Uh, are you a pessimist or an optimist? Are you. Do you Life is good. Is there something in the middle? That seems so extreme, pessimist, optimist. Well, I just know like people that, you know, it's always worst case scenario. Yeah. I think the older, then... the older people get, at least for me, I know, again, I lost my father very young. I lost one of my best friends very young. You know, I... It's sad. Well, no, I, you know, my mother died four years ago at 79 and she, I, you know, it was hard for me because my father died. I was 20, I, it was me and her. I, I became like her husband for, right. honestly, for like the next 10 yeah, years. Yeah, you guys are like besties. So, I mean, it was very hard and she's, you know, we found out she had cancer. She had come up for Christmas. She hadn't been off Cape in three years. And we knew something was wrong with her. My sister's like, be prepared. So we find out, and she's very sick. And this is all oh. happened in January. And so yeah. we're down at the Cape Cod Hospital. And my sister says to me, and my older sister who lives down the Cape, and I was all at power of attorney, my mother signed off on anything. No treatment. No nothing. No, no, like, just put nothing. Oh. So we didn't, you know. That, that was, was taken out of our hands. That was her and wish. I, that was her wish. Yeah. But still, I, I was her only son. I was like, Ma, come on. So she looked at me and she sat me down. And I was having a hard time. And I haven't, you know, I again, I, so she says, listen to me. I've had a great life. I'm good. I'm ready to go. You need to be okay with that. I have goosebumps. Well, no, but this is a lady who father funny. died when she was 10. They went to... They went to Holy Thursday Mass. They came home. They found my grandfather dead at 36 in a chair. He had a massive stroke. My grandmother raised six kids all on her own. My mother was the oldest. She helped raise my aunt, who was 10 months old. Then that same aunt that she helped raise, she buried when she was 60. She got cancer. My mother took care of her the last three months of her life. Mm. She buried all these people. Her dad. I mean, her husband. Her husband dropped dead. She was a widow of 51. Jesus. Never heard a bad word. Again, for, again, my mother could have been one of those people that could have had, had something to bitch about. Not on your life. I, I've had a great life. Isn't that like she didn't bitch? Yep. She just took the Happiness on, is a it. choice, as Rosalind Catalano oh, used to say. Uh -huh, it really is. Mm -hmm. but it, right? it, well, that, it's a, I say that all the time. You it's do. a fact. You have to wake up and be happy. You have to wake up and be grateful, right? You have to be grateful for everything that you have right now. I think, you're the you, I think the older you, I agree 100. Right? I think the older you get, you realize how short life is. It I think, is it, right. You know, that I, I've really been starting to think that now because you know all our my parents, all my friends' parents are passing, and you know we're getting older, and I'm starting to feel it in my body as well, and you know then you hear about people just dropping dead at. My best my friend had a, my best friend had a stroke. Forty six just dropped just dropped yeah. dead the, the Friday before April vacation in so 2015. Scary. Yeah. Do you feel like when it's your time, it's your time? I, I you know, my and mother. That it's my, already preset. I, I, my mother did that. I, I do a little bit. I, I mean, again, I, you know, my father, you know, when he died, he like a lot of guys from that generation. He was a smoker. He didn't go to the doctors. I go to the doctors probably four times. I, I'm really on top of my health. I try to be. Good I don't smoke. You. I don't drink. Well, no, because you don't drink anything. Nothing. Uh, my wife a drinks beer? enough. My 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 wife drinks enough for both of us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like her. I want to go hang out with her. The queen? Yes. The queen is a good person. I want to go hang out to with her. To tolerate me, you'd have to be a good person. You seem like you're easy to tolerate. You seem like you're fine. I've come a long way. You Let's cook? just say that. Yeah. I try. I give myself credit for that. I, it means a lot to me. Good for you. Well, my father. I, I have a great father. I had great parents. Yes. I had great mother and father. Again, you had good examples. Yeah. You know, it's not easy being married. No, that's why I'm divorced. That's too much for me. I'm like, eh. I don't find that. I don't. I don't just met you. You seem like you can handle a lot. I can. Sometimes you just with the wrong person that I, you know, I see that with some people, and, and that's tough. Well, you know, and I always say to Alexa that you know you can fall in love with so many people, right? I would you, agree with that, right? You love, I like, you know, I love him and I love her and I love it and I love doing this and I love doing that, but it if you cannot grow 
with the person you're with. And you're not compatible. You've got to be it's compatible. It's really about growing. Well, that's, I, I think that's part yeah. of compatibility. Yeah. And so, you know, you know, things happen. But guess what? It's okay. You don't know me, but my ex and I are very close. I just went on the huge Weinstein cruise, 35 Weinsteins. <laughs> and I brought along my boyfriend, who's Cape Verdean. And guess what? They That's a love lot of him. Steens. They love. There's a lot of steens, <laughs> and I'm so close with the family, and I, we love each well, other. Well, that, well, that's that's nice to hear because you don't always hear that. I mean, right. Well, you can tell that I'm a nice person. Besides being the real estate guru. Well, you know that's why we the have social a- media stuff again. I just the reason I, I see you guys do a lot with it. I, I, my, Gary Donovan, who I work for, is the role plate guy. He's got like half a million followers. So he does. Get, yeah. It. Wait. Have you seen my Instagram page? No, I haven't, but I'm going to oh, do yeah. it. Oh, yeah. My stories are sometimes fun. I do a lot of Tony Eats. Mm-hmm. I, I, As soon as my boyfriend starts eating, I take the camera and I go close. Uh, I wouldn't be a big fan of that myself. <laughs> he likes it. I liked the noodles with the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like cheese? Dr. McDougal says no cheese. I kind of feel like it's not breaking. Sorry, Dr. Me. McDougal. I guess that's... Uh, Try eating rice and potatoes for a week. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? With so some I rice, rice and potatoes I, and some lima beans. <laughs> I ate rice and potatoes last night, but we threw a steak. You know what next I had last it. night? You had probably a steak. Nope. Chicken. I made salmon, steamed clams, mm. steamers, and my brother came in suddenly. What? Yep. I love when he just flies in. We he never know when he's in. coming. And so Comes in. I made a big Started. seafood. I made steamed clams. Where'd you and buy then them? I got 15 lobsters and took all the shells off and yeah. sauteed the meat in butter and lemon. Where was our invite? Burgers invite? and dogs. You know, you know how to cook, obviously. Meredith, K. Keach, you outdid yourself. Where did you buy the lobsters and your steamers? Market basket. It's Which tough. one? Bridgewater, West Bridgewater. Do you go to the one in Brockton? It's not West Bridgewater is quickest for me. What? It's, a, I'll, oh. it's an Aldi now. Oh, it is? Uh, I found that out last week when I was over there. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh. The, when I, I won't go into it with Mark and Baskin Brock. But I get them steamed, not the oh. steamers, so I steam the steamers myself. Oh. Yeah. Do you eat steamers? I feel like you're Lo- not. Love, love. You're a steamer oh, person? Oh, I love steamers. My right. folks like that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I just, so we go to, um, we go to Plymouth a lot for steamers. Um, East Bay Grill, absolutely East delicious Bay steamers. East Bay Grill, nice. Oh my God, the food is it's so, good it is so good. Mm. So freaking good. And then I had a hankering the other day for steamers, so we just went to Doyle's. How were they? Very sweet and delicious. Yeah. They make food at Doyle's? I just thought they drank there. No, they have really good food. We had we had, we had barriers out there the last two years out in front. Like we did oh, a lot of Jersey barrier stuff there. A horrendous COVID. intersection right there. Which one? It is the worst, Who? probably the worst one anywhere. Where? The intersection of um, Purchase and 138. You said that Stoughton had the worst intersection. No, but I mean for accidents. And this this, this is, I'm going to date myself, but it's a Stoughton was person. rated oh, yeah. one of the worst in the United it. States. The, the old Crossroads Cafe intersection. Yes, that's the same. Crossroads yeah. is Doyle's. Oh. That's yeah. what I mean. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Yeah, that one right that's there bad. is. I played at the Crossroads so Ice Arena for yeah. years. You did? Yeah. You were a hockey player growing up? I actually was. I couldn't let my kids play hockey. Why not? Because I was not getting up at the crack of dawn. But your girls don't play, right? Just Harry? No, my older my older one played and was very good, but my wife then got the claws into her because my wife never got to dance. My wife, my actually oldest was a dance that Natta. She was a very good dancer. We thought she might dance in college, but no. Hmm. The wife won that battle. You know, it's like we spend all this money and our, you know, for our kids to play all these sports, and then look at Roy, Roy's daughter Judith. She was a well, dancer I mean, until until she found a coach she- found her and said, "I think you'd be a good runner," and sure enough. Full boat, St. Joe's running fast as can be. Well, I mean, you spend money on your kids. That's, I mean, again, you don't, not, I, we don't look, I, I don't look for anything in return. My, My daughter bad. had a great experience in dance and you yeah. know, she was going to dance in college and it didn't work out and we were like, fine. You were like, fine. Well, I, my father told me not to have more than two kids. He Why goes, is that? you will not have more than two kids or you will go into poverty. Well, I, he's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's right. I had four, and I I said this to her yesterday. Can you imagine how choice. rich you'd well, no. be? You'd be rich. Well, we were talking about that the other day. We'd be loaded. Loaded. Yeah, but your father wasn't given anything. I mean, he came from nothing. He came from nothing. By the way, my biological father died when I was two. What happened? If you don't mind me asking. Hodgkin's disease and polio. Deep. 
thoughts. I'm adopted. My Greek father adopted me. I grew up a Greek Jew. Me and Eddie Levezzo were the only ones with ethnic last names in Hebrew school. I mean, one of my greatest bucket list places to go is Greece. I was supposed to go with Francis a million years ago, and I never made it happen. Do you go? Why? Why don't you go to Greece all the time? Talking about that, all of a sudden I get a messenger call. Comes up in Greek. It was my cousin Billy Pavlakis. Well, calling from Athens. He speaks the most beautiful English. I'm like Billy. <laughs> he goes, "Damn me!" So we were chatting, and he said, "I'm calling because I keep calling your father, who's his uncle." He said, "Now in Greece they don't celebrate birthdays; they celebrate name days." Oh. He said, "Tomorrow's your father's name day. His he's Panayotis, oh. and his name day is tomorrow." So I am trying to call him. <laughs> Adam, you didn't give us the five <laughs> minute mark, and now Meredith had to give it to you. So anyway, oh, oh, so anyway, yeah. So he was calling to wish my father his happy birthday. So you going to Greece? Day. Well, I don't. That's I, the best movie ever. I what? can recite it, the, the Greek wedding movie. Oh. Like every, if you talk to at least my Greek guys that I know, they're Greek. They don't think it's funny. Well, no, they say it's the, exactly the truth. That's it's what they tell you. They say it's the truth. The truth. truth. Yeah, that's right. what they said. So my mother and I were in the movie theater convulsing. We had tears streaming. I couldn't breathe. I had to leave the movie theater. My father goes, this movie's not funny. He didn't think it was funny <laughs> at all. Because it's because exactly it, it was the truth. It was exactly uh, the truth, a thousand percent. Mm. Mm-hmm. The Greeks invented that. <laughs> the Greeks invented everything. So are you going to Greece? Yeah. Well, Benny just told me we're going to Paris. But yeah, I do want to go to Greece. My daughter just got back from Greece and loved it. How, yeah. What's not to love? I don't know. They were, I fell in love. They with graduated, and went on a Europe trip, and that was the last stop. That's amazing. Yeah. I haven't like been since Greece. I've been little. My boyfriend's Greek. What? Yeah. You're kidding. Well, not Greek Greek, but he's half Greek and he's Lebanese. Greek, he's yeah. not Greek, Greek, Greek and Lebanese. <laughs> yeah, Is his mother Greek or Ray she... George? <laughs> his father's Matt George. That's about as Greek as it gets. My last name is Pavlakis. Pavlakis. Interesting. Mm. Like Dukakis. He wasn't Greek. Dukakis? Yeah. Yes, he was. Was he really? Michael Dukakis is Sorry. so Greek. He looks Greek. I remember he used to take the tea to work. Remember his when, wife? When drank. the tea actually worked. Yes, he used to take the tea. <laughs> when the tea didn't break remember down. Remember Kitty? Kitty was an alky. And Kitty drank oh, dude, um, nail not, polish remover. On. Yeah. What? Do you know how many Kitty times they said alky. that they're going to- Kitty was an alky. They're going to revamp the tea. Right. And then they Wait, just you don't. guys, before we go, yeah. can you please give me an idea? We know, Adam, I have the dead celebrity party coming up. Who should I dress as? A dead celebrity. Gregory told me the Queen of England. Oh. Some, but everyone's telling me I should dress like Prince. I'm like, I oh. feel like I kind of look mm. like Prince. Oh, I don't know. Adam, you're in on this too. I have no idea. Do, well, what do you want to do? You want to be a model, a rock star, like a pol- I don't politician? Know. You know, people like Anna Nicole Smith. How do I dress like, or Marie, Marie uh, Presley? How do you dress like these people? Yeah. Well, I, I, would have... say, I would say that would be more of an easier one for you, Marie Presley. Yeah. Well, Lisa it just Marie. depends like how big. Maybe you should be Marie Antoinette and get this huge Victorian dress. Where do I get such a dress? Sounds, Amazon. Sounds too complicated. HolidayExpress.com. Maybe I'll be Marie Antoinette. Yeah. I mean, you'd have a big Victorian dress. It would be very fun. I won't be able to get in and, anywhere. And the the wig yeah. that goes all the way up to here, like Bridgerton. <laughs> yes. right. I'll go online today. Goofing and, and you can wear your jewelry. <laughs> I want to thank you for having me. Hey. That's it, Matt. Matt keeps looking at the time. No. Well, did you have fun? I had a blast. I did radio in college. I said to her, I've been on the oh, you did? Said, yeah. Oh, oh, do you want to come back? I'd love to come back. I hope I did all right. We can bring Gary back. <laughs> Who's Gaff? Can I, oh, Gaff. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. yeah. That would be a hit of a show. Yeah. Gary wants him. We have another microphone. Yeah. We have four. I, I would just stay out in the hall while Gary was doing this. He would no, just, you will come Ga- on with Gaff. Gary, Gary, yeah. Gary's from Southie. He would just hold court. Oh, my God. We need to have... All right. We're we're booking you and Gaff. Yeah. Gary is... What can I call Gary's Gaff? last name? Donovan. <gasps> Gary, I'm going Gary, Gary at roadplates.com. <laughs> I'm going to ask my Southie friend if he knows him. I love it. Probably does. Knows all right. everybody. All right. We got to go. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, all. Thanks for watching. Don't forget Listening. to subscribe. Subscribe. At We Love the Show. We love you guys. Bye. Thank-